Hey, it's Eric from Dehaven Camera, and in this video, we're gonna go over one of the most overlooked things in setting up your camera package, the setup, balance, and use of your fluid head and tripod. We often see tripods and fluid heads that are heavily overweighted by cameras which are too heavy for the payload capacity of the tripod. And we see misleading advertising from some brands showing high payload capacities on very small heads. The reasoning behind that is that most heads, or many heads, will have a rated payload capacity of, say, 26 pounds, but what they'll fail to mention in some of their uh documentation is how high above center of gravity that is. So for instance, here we're using our O'Connor 1040D, which is a 39 pound rated tripod or fluid head. But actually in its documentation, you'll see that that 39 pounds is at about six to eight inches above this plate. And as we go higher up, the payload capacity can quickly diminish down to around 12 pounds. So that's because we have to think of the tripod as a lever. The higher up our center of gravity, the more weight is being forced onto the pivot axis, which means less weight capacity of the tripod. If we look at some of the lesser or lower cost brands, we'll see high payload capacities with either unpublished center of gravity max, max heights or um, published ones, but you'll notice that they diminish very quickly. So it's a good thing to keep that in mind. And for brands that have unpublished uh, weight charts, always err on the side of about 30% under your maximum capacity for a standard camera package which sits about four to six inches center of gravity above your plate. So going into that, we're gonna take a look at uh, our Venice here. So we're gonna put a Venice one onto our camera package here, or onto our fluid head and we're gonna lock that down. Now, for most cameras, it's a really good idea to use what we call a dovetail or a sliding plate. In this instance, this is called an Airy Standard Dovetail. It's a little bit wider than some of the LWS or narrow dovetails, which you can see on some of the smaller cameras like Blackmagic Pockets. So this dovetail allows us to unlock and easily slide the camera forward or backward quickly. That allows us to find a balance or center of gravity for the tilt. It also allows for an easy quick release so that we can just slide the camera off and take it off uh, to go handheld or to put it back on the bench. The reason for that is that an unbalanced camera, say just bolted directly to the top of the tripod with no, no forward or rear balance, can cause the camera to either fall backwards or tilt forwards when you're not paying attention to it. If we accidentally walk away with the, cam with the tilt unlocked, the camera could potentially slowly tilt forward on its own, and if it happens to fall between the tripod legs, can actually tip over in some circumstances. So having a well-balanced tripod is quite important. So like we said for this instance, we're gonna have an airy slide plate here. Um, we're gonna come around to the back on this tripod, and we have a small adjustment here. So on the O'Connors, we have a little rotating adjustment called the counterbalance. Now the counterbalance allows you to add or remove weight to counteract the weight of the camera itself. So for an example here, we're gonna take a lot of the counterbalance out. We're gonna see right now that the camera wants to fall backwards. So we're gonna unlock and slide this forward. Now, a lot of ACs you'll see while they're working on the camera, say building it up even during prep, they'll put the body on, no battery, they'll adjust it. Put the battery on, they'll make another small adjustment. Put the lens on, again, another small adjustment. That's a good habit to get into because you're not relying on the tripod lock to keep it from falling forward. So just in the event that you are unlocked, we can walk away and the camera's balanced. So it's a good habit to get into as you're building the camera to always keep adjusting and keeping it balanced. So now that we've found our front to rear balance, we want to find our counterbalance. The counterbalance makes it so that the camera doesn't want to just fall forward like this or fall back. So by adding more counterbalance, which we can do by turning this knob here uh, or this crank on the back of the 1040, on some cameras uh, like, or some heads like a Sackler, it's a little uh, step knob on the back, or like many of our Cartonis, uh, it may be a, uh, a knob on the side. So as we add more counterbalance, we can see that the camera can pretty much stay where I want it. If we add too much counterbalance, the camera will pogo back. So like we can see, it's bounding, or coming back at me like this. That's too much counterbalance. So we'll reduce the counterbalance again, just till we get to the point where the camera doesn't really wanna come back. 
towards me. So it wants to sort of stay in position. So that would be the correct amount of counterbalance. From there, we can then start to add our tilt drag and that will give us that, that smooth movement that we're looking for and the ability for me to just leave the camera pointed in a direction with the head unlocked. I could walk away from this and the camera is not going to just start to tilt over on its own because again, we're well balanced. We have the correct amount of counterbalance and a little bit of tilt drag. So once we have that done, we can then start to adjust our pan drag. So on the 1040D, it's this knob down here on the operator's left hand side. And by reducing the pan drag, we can make it move uh, more freely, pan right to left, and by increasing we can reduce that free movement or add more drag so it moves more slowly. One misnomer that some people will do with a lower cost heads that don't have a lot of um, drag reduction is they'll vary the amount of lock. So your pan lock, we've seen this be, be done, is vary the lock here and try to use that as your drag reduction. That's a really bad habit to get into because it can really heavily wear onto the pads or the brakes within the within the head and ultimately damage your head. So making sure that you're completely unlocked and you're using the pan drag, the fluid drag to give you that resistance. And if you don't have enough fluid drag or enough resistance for your, or your uh, preferred operation, move to a bigger or higher quality head which will give you that kind of resistance that you're looking for. The next thing with a lot of these heads is we have a QR, a quick release in the front. Um, on the 1040, it's up here in the front. On our Cartonis, it's in the back. Sacklers, it's in the back as well. And that will be on our QR plate, or our quick release plate. It's very important when you're locking that plate down that you hear it click completely and then always check the lever to make sure it locks back and is completely locked before you let go of the camera. On standard QR plates like the Sacklers, uh, those should lock fully into place, but if you have anything binding that system, sometimes that lock can get stuck and you can actually have it loose. So I like to just give it a little extra push to make sure it's fully locked down. On the O'Connors, when you put this in, it's not going to lock fully right away and you have to manually put it into the locked position and there's a safety lock on the front of the knob. So the next thing to remember when packing up your tripod, we're going to take our camera off. We can remove this off the dovetail, put our camera back over here safely. When we're going to pack this back up in the case, it's a good thing to always take off your dovetail, put this somewhere where it's not impacting the camera or banging up against a tripod or sticks. So usually in a side pocket or in a case somewhere where there's space. The next thing, and we see this all the time, is we never want to store a fluid head with the head tilted down and locked like this with the handle pointed uh, in parallel with the legs. That causes a heavy amount of stress on the counterbalance system and can damage the head in transit. So it's always important to leave the head flat and you can either leave it locked or unlocked, but flat and level with no tension. Reduce the counterbalance when you're traveling, when it's going, getting packed up for a long period of time. Um, if it's just overnight for the next shoot day, you can leave it where it is, but if you're taking it back from a rental or if it's going to be stored for a couple weeks till your next shoot is reduce your counterbalance. That avoids having strain or tension put on the counterbalance springs um, and can add wear to the tripod just sitting. And then we want to loosen our pan bar and point that downward. And for the most part, we like to leave these loose in the case so that then they don't get bound up with the legs. And then we can pull the legs up and fold the whole tripod. That way it can go in the case with the pan bar without getting it obstructed. So that's a good way to transport your tripod when it's going into a large tall case. If you have a fluid head which comes with its own case, remove it from the sticks and you can put that in its own case. So I hope that helped. We have lots of different fluid heads available for rental. Everything from large O'Connors all the way down to small Sacklers um, available and we can pair those with the camera and wait capacity that you're shooting with, feel free to reach out with any questions and rentals at rentals at dehavencamera.com, our website dehavencamera.com. Feel free to give us a call, give us an email, we'll get you sorted out.